remember him kind of being fiery and passionate, and I think he, um, you know, was everybody's best friend. It, it seemed like when you when you talk about uh, when I, the time that I was at uh, at Vanderbilt, and I think everybody enjoyed being him, and I think he made everybody feel special, like they were special, and um, you know that, that's what I strive to do as well. And I talked about that with our staff today. That um, you know I'm going to get to know them. Um, I'm going to get to know when their birthdays are, when their anniversaries are, when their kids' birthdays are. Um, I'm going to care for our staff. I'm going to care for people in this community. And uh, again, I'm, we're going to be a part. Jennifer and I and our family are going to be a part of this community moving forward. What sold you on this program? I mean, you had to be sold as well, right? Absolutely. What, what's there not to sell about the University of Arkansas and being a part of the Razorback program? I mean, this, uh, you're in the Southeastern Conference. Um, you have an opportunity to compete for and win conference and national championships year in and year out in multiple sports. And we're going to get this football piece right. We're going to get it right. I promise you we're getting that right. And uh, if you get that train rolling, the football train rolling, uh, the sky's the limit for this athletic program. And I really believe that, uh, you know, Chancellor Steinmetz uh, is just an unbelievable leader. I mean, it's important for the director of athletics and the, the chancellor of the university to have a great relationship. I have a great relationship with my former president at the University of Houston, and I talked about that during the interview process with the chancellor that I want to have a great relationship with you. I want you to be able to call and text me at any time you need to. I sent him a text message at 4 o'clock in the morning, uh, Monday or Tuesday morning, um, and he responded right away responded right away that's the type of relationship i want to have i didn't expect him to respond i just didn't want to forget to text him you know and go and so it's a, that's what i want to have when did you get into town was it last night last oh, night my wife and i get in last night yes pretty pretty unusual for an ad to be hired as a coach is, is being hired and and you know having the experience you've had hiring coaches can you just describe what your thoughts were as you're looking at the job you're taking the job you're kind of seeing where the they are in the search and how all that's kind of gone for you well, again, I've been in this role for 36 hours, and uh, and Julie's brought me up to speed on where we are at the search. I mean, you guys are assuming we've got a coach already hired. I mean, where are you getting this information from? <laughs> um, so uh, I'm, uh, I'm wondering if maybe you were thinking the same thing when you took the job. No, it's uh, – look, I can't – look, you guys just hold on to your hat. So we, we've, we've gotten it right, and uh, when the uh, – T's are crossed and the I's are dotted, and that this comes out officially, you're going to be really excited. So that made you okay with it, no, kind of knowing where they were? Absolutely, yeah. absolutely. Um, you know, I talked to Julie for the first time Monday afternoon after the chancellor made this official, and she brought me up to date on the search and where the candidate, the candidate pool uh, that uh, she had interviewed and been in front of and kind of where this search was heading, and I was 100% comfortable with the direction of this search. Have you seen someone you looked at before as a head football coach? Hmm. Um, I, I will tell you, yes, uh, that uh, when Mac Rhodes and I were um, searching for football coaches um, <clears throat> um, back in, I'm trying to think, 2014 when we hired Coach Herman, uh, we did have a large candidate pool, and uh, Chad Morse, who's now the head coach at SMU, uh, was one of those candidates. And um, we may have hired him at the University of, of Houston if uh, SMU wasn't ahead of the, the search um, at that time, June Jones got let go in the middle of the season, um, if, if you may remember. And so uh, they were able to gobble him up before we had the chance to do so um, at the University of Houston. Now, obviously, it worked out very well for us at the University of Houston. Tom Herman did an amazing job, came in there and led us to the Peach Bowl and was 13-1, and and now is at the University of Texas. So. Chad's told his team he's no longer the head coach at SMU. He has? Yes. Where's he going? He's apparently here. <laughs> How much interaction, you mentioned that previous interaction with him, but how much interaction have he, you maybe had with him the last 24, 36 months? Enough. Enough well, interaction. When you've been so involved in hiring was, processes before, I mean, are there certain characteristics you've looked for in a head coach? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I just talked about that. First, I mean, obviously you want a coach that knows the X's and O's. If you're going to hire a coach that's going to coach in the Southeastern Conference, your candidate pool is going to have a list of coaches that understand X's and O's. Uh, on both sides of the ball, they're going to hire great people that if they are strong on one side, they're going to hire a great person on the other side that knows that. Um, character, I think, is unbelievably important. Um, character um, and how they represent your, your football coach is your face of your program. Uh, they've got to be comfortable being out and about, being the face of your program, not only with recruits, but with all your constituents across your state. Um, they've got to have somebody in this day and age that can really relate uh, to people, uh, not only the young men that are um, in their program, but uh, people um, that they're going to come in contact again because they're the face of your program. When you saw Stacy was on this uh, advisory committee, what were your thoughts? Well, obviously, um, you know, I called to get her thoughts on the University of Arkansas. 
um, and knowing that she and Stacy was look um, I know there's a, the impression that maybe Stacy gave me an advantage she gave me an advantage because she gave me some great insight on the University of Arkansas and really made um, she, she did a great job selling me on this the opportunity that this was more so I think than selling me as a candidate to the the, the the people here. Um, she, she was a great resource for me as I was preparing for my interview and really what was needed here. Um, and again, she did a great job selling. She's passionate about the University of Arkansas and her time here. How'd that first hog call go? <laughs> I think I did all right. I think, did you, you guys in there? I think Coach I did all right. Said you did well. He said I did well. Yeah, I'm learning. I'm learning. I got it. You, you talked a lot about football being successful. Have you been kind of read in on the challenges of, of winning at Arkansas and, you know, a lack of in-state SEC caliber talent causes you to go outside the state and you're obviously in a really difficult division where recruiting resources are abundant throughout the SEC West. Yeah, I mean, obviously, I mean, recruiting is your lifeline. If you're going to have success, I mean, you, all these coaches at this level, they're all, um, I don't know, want to say they're equal, but they all are, they know what they're doing. They know what they're doing. So who wins football games for Jimmy and Joe's? Uh, not necessarily X's and O's. And so you've got to get, recruiting is your lifeline. And, um, you know, I think you've got to, Arkansas, there's some talent in this state, but I think you also have to open up Texas recruiting because in the close proximity um, you are to Texas here, it's at the, quick four-hour drive to get to the North Dallas area. Um, you know, it's not terribly far from the Houston area as far as driving or, or getting on a plane. It took us, I think, an hour to get up here. Um, and there's everybody recruits Texas. And um, I think, you know, what I learned from uh, when we were trying to get Houston into the Big 12 is that when Texas A&M left <clears throat> the Big 12 and went to the Southeastern Conference, recruits from Texas left Big 12 schools or stopped going to Big 12 schools in such mass and they started going to the likes of Texas A&M, LSU and Alabama and I think that's very important to the success of this program moving forward that we tap into that.